Oh, hi. Shane here. You know, if you've seen my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of science, and... Well, how did that happen? Well, I've had quite a few influences in my life. Uh, Carl Sagan, Bill Nye the Science Guy, David Willey, Beacon's World. But probably the one who got the ball rolling was a guy by the name of Don Herbert. You probably know him as Mr. Wizard. Yeah, he had a little show uh, in the early 70s, I think, on NBC called Ask Mr. Wizard or something like that. I kind of barely remember that. And then later on, he had Mr. Wizard's World. And that, and there were other shows uh, soon after that. Uh, Carl Sagan's Cosmos series on PBS. I was glued to the TV for that one. Um, Ira Flato of Science Friday had a um, another show on PBS called Newton's Apple. And it was great because you learned so much and they made science fun. Uh, Unlike school, they made it as boring as possible, so I'm really thankful for those influences. So, when I heard that Mr. Wizard had died last month, you know, of course I felt a loss, because I really owe so much to him. He was such an influence on me. And so when Rebecca Watson said, hey, let's have a moment of science in memory of Mr. Wizard, I thought that was a great idea, and I wanted to contribute, but how much can you do with the... Uh, broken arm, a broken leg, and a piece taken out of your thigh for a bone graft. Well, all my favorite science demos uh, involve a lot of physical movement, and that's not in the cards. But, you know, science is everywhere. You can do anything. It's really practical. I like what they teach you in school. You use this stuff all the time, even when you're making a cup of tea. Of course, to make tea, you have to boil the water. Then you have to steep the uh, tea bag in the water. But even then, I find it's still a little too hot to drink. So you know what I do? I leave the metal spoon in the tea. I put the sugar in. I stir it up. I just leave it in there. Why? Because I know, because Mr. Wizard told me, that metal absorbs heat faster. You see, this whole system, you got the tea, you've got the cup, you got the air, you got the spoon. They're all trying to reach the same temperature. But there's a difference between temperature and heat. So even though they're all approaching the same temperature, the metal spoon is absorbing more of the heat. It's kind of like if you're baking a cake and... Sorry about that, the batteries went. Anyway, it's kind of like if you're baking a cake and the oven's 400 degrees. Uh, you open the door, you stick your hand in the air, it's 400 degrees, but you don't feel anything. You touch the cake to see if it's ready, and it feels warm. If you accidentally touch the metal rack, you get burned. They're all at 400 degrees, but the metal has more heat. So, just by leaving the spoon in the tea, it's already gotten hot, it actually pulls more of the heat out of the tea. So even after it's finished brewing, I'm still waiting for it to cool down, I don't have to wait as long. The metal acts as a heat sink, and the tea should be about right. Still a little too hot, but it's about there. Now, this principle gets used all over the place. If you open up your computer and look at the processor, you see a metal thing on the processor with a fan on it. That's there to pull the heat off of the processor and keep it going. A lot of transistors, uh, the bigger ones, have heat sinks on them because they get really hot. Uh, and this concept is used all sorts of places. Have you ever heard of firewalking? Some people try to snow you and say, ooh, it's mind over matter, it's mystical stuff. No, it just has to do with the transference of heat. The wood coals don't have that much heat in them. Even though they're 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit, you can walk over them without getting burned, as long as you don't hang around on them. Okay, I'm going to finish this up on my camera phone. I don't know what's the matter with the other thing. I put new batteries in it. It went off anyway. I'll have to figure it out. But this is used all over the place, and that's the wonderful thing about science. And that was the wonderful thing about how Mr. Wizard taught science. He taught it in a way that was easily accessible and that you could actually use for even the most mundane tasks, like making a cup of tea. Should be just right. Mm, yeah, that's good. But maybe there is still hope for the young if they reject the tongue being slung from the tongues of the ignorant fools who call themselves teachers and listen instead to their science teachers. Upon blind faith, they place reliance. What we need more of is science. On blind faith, they place reliance. What we need more of is science. On blind faith, they place reliance.